Okay, so let's say you want to make a sail panel window on a uh, template here in uh, SBS, late models or modifieds, take your pick. We open the template up, I'm going to shut the wire frame off so we get it out of the way, and uh, we'll zoom in a little bit so we have it 100%. We're going to go up here, we're going to make a vector based sail panel window for our modified. I'm only going to do one. You can use the same technique to do the other window when you're done. So the first thing I'm going to do is over here we have these vector tools. We have a path tool or pen tool as it's often called. You can see the little highlight there. This is all done in Photoshop. It can be done in uh, just about any version of Photoshop. Um, from Photoshop 7 or CS all the way up to the current CS5. Um, I'm going to click on the pen tool and we want to do a fill layer. So we're going to select here and make it a shape layer. Uh, color, I'm going to choose something that's a little bit more of like a grayish color just because we're going to add um, probably a gradient to it when we're done. Uh, I'm going to start here. I'm going to click the button. It gives us a point. And we're going to come down here and click another button again, which will give us a point. I come back over here and click and drag, and as you can see, it gives us what we call like a Bezier curve. And then I'm going to come back up here to this point, and this is a close uh, icon. You see that little circle? It'll let you know that you're going to make a complete and total shape. I'm going to click on it. And there we go, we've got a shape. Well, now that we've got a shape, what can we do with this shape? We can add some detail to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a stroke to it. Now I know some people out there are probably screaming, no, don't use the stroke. But in our case, I don't see any problem with it. I think it makes pretty good use you can go in if you use um, Illustrator, um, you can actually create a, uh, a what they call a, a path offset which will allow you to create a secondary shape. Um, I can show how to do that in another tutorial at a later date. Um, for those who are strictly Photoshop bound, this is the easiest way to go about it. So I've added a stroke to it which gives it this nice little edge around it. Now I'm going to go in and add an inner glow. What this inner glow is going to allow us to do is have a little bit of like an edge along the inside. So I'm going to click on choke and drag the choke all the way up. And you can start to see it appearing a little bit right there. We're going to increase the size of it. Gives it this little edge. You can change the range here, which kind of affects it. You can see the shape kind of change a little bit. You can play with that if you don't like it quite the way that I have it use anti-alias which kind of smooths that edge out so it doesn't look so jaggy. Uh, we're going to change the color of this from this off-white to the regular white. And then I'm going to adjust the opacity a little bit. So now that we have that, we can add a little bevel and emboss action to it. As you can see it kind of gives it a 3D effect to the shape. We're going to adjust we're going to shut this global light off here. I'm going to switch this to about 90 degrees. You can adjust this to whatever suits you. And uh, we're going to play with the altitude a little bit. And by adjusting this using the shift key, you can kind of play around with it until you get that effect that actually makes it look like it's three dimensional. And since we've got this white edge, you can also add a little drop shadow. You take the distance all the way back, and if you adjust the size just enough, it gives it almost a little bit of a black edge around here, which is good considering the, the highlight. It allows it to have a little bit more depth again. We're going to add a gradient overlay to it. You can play around with your gradients by just dragging inside the shape, as you can see I have here. It gives it a little bit more of a 3D effect to the overall coloring as well. Um, you can adjust this um, to be an overlay, or we can 
go in and drag that gradient down a little bit. Now it has a little bit more of a, a glossy window effect to it as well. Um, you can add satin to it if you want to make it a little darker. I think it looks pretty well as it is. <clears throat> we can go into pattern overlay. There's some um, different patterns in here that are stock. You can create your own if you want to. It's not too hard. I can do a tutorial on that as well. Um, we'll add this, which is going to add kind of almost like that. If you've ever seen when people do a lot of illustrations with reflected light, um, it has like that neon light kind of effect. If we cut the opacity down. It looks like you've got some overhead lights kind of shining down on the window. And you can kind of move that around too to suit what your preference is. If you want to get really detailed with this, you can actually go in and copy these rivets off the template and then just add them around the outside of the window. And that's a quick and dirty um, tutorial on how to make a sail panel window for an SBS modified. Um, same technique would work for the uh, SBS late models, dirt factor late models, hard factor late models, um, just about any kind of uh, sim racing dirt track car or you know maybe even some paved track cars I'm not sure. Um, that's basically it. Enjoy.